So the police officers who are investing, police officers, words, this is, <laughs> you know, I can hear you guys screaming at me already. So again, I have great, read the entire book, please. <laughs> and it says, now everybody's gonna stop watching. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to another book recommendation video for Booktober Bingo, Spring Ahead. So I definitely wanted to make an effort this time around. And if you guys have seen the other videos, you will know this, I'll link all the things, that I had had some requests last time to do some specific recommendations on some of the squares. Cause I know some of the prompts are a little bit more challenging than others. I did it to challenge myself. I did it all in good fun. And I'm gonna do some recommendation videos again, as you guys would know <laughs> if you've seen other videos. So today we are gonna talk about Found in Translation, which is obviously stolen from the Sofia Coppola book, Lo or movie Lost in Translation. And these are books that have been translated from another language into any language or the language what you read or speak. So for me, it is books translated into English. I am going to have a mix of books that I have read, which I would recommend to you guys, and then potential books that I'm going to read for this prompt. So you know me, like to have options, never make a TBR. But of course, my wheels are turning. And of course, I have a lot of books that are unread on my shelf that have been translated into English. So here we go. Let's get into it. So the first author I want to talk about is Frederick Bachman. He is a thousand percent a contender for me. So this is Beartown. This is a three-part series of Beartown, Us Against You, and The Winners. And I have read the first two books in the series, and my plan is to reread the first two books in the series and then go into The Winners. So if you are looking for just a book that will blow your mind, Town is it if you are looking to get into a series so some of these books will double down for other prompts as well first in the series you guys so this works for opening day as well and it's just such an incredible book I have talked about this book ad nauseum on this channel but it is a book that broke me took me to my knees it is like heartbreaking it is hopeful it is gut-wrenching it will make you think and question not everything, but a lot of things I find. So this is set in a small Swedish town of Beartown where ice hockey is all the things. The entire town revolves around it. It revolves around the players. You get a real look at sort of that hero worship for athletes in this. And this book has so many points of view and so many opinions and just emotions to it. So the core of this story is that the star player of the hockey team is accused of sexually assaulting a girl at a party and that girl is the daughter of the hockey coach and this team is set to go to the playoffs again everything in this town revolves around this team this town relies on this team for money for the jobs that it creates for what it brings into the town and this one event and this one accusation ripples through this entire town and like i said everybody has an opinion everybody has a feeling and this explores so many different issues and emotions and it's just one of the best books i have read in my life i was blown away by his literal writing i was blown away by the story i will continue to recommend it as a must read so I'm not gonna go into descriptions like this for all the books, I promise, I always say that, but I absolutely love it. But if for some reason you're not looking to get into a series or you've already read this one, A Man Called Uva is another huge popular Bachman book. I've also read that one and he has Anxious People, which I haven't read yet and a few others. So Bachman is a great choice, great place to start. I needed to <laughs> catch my breath. Another author that I love that you guys have heard me talk about is Ragnar Jonasson, and this is The Darkness. So this is his Holda series. This is the second series he wrote, but the first one that I read. This is a three book series, but similarly to Beartown, you can absolutely read this first book and be done. I feel like, like you can read this in its entirety and uh, read the entire book, please. <laughs> you can read this book and choose not to continue on in the series if you so choose. I read the entire series. I really loved this book. And like I said, the first of his that I have read, and I don't know if I connected to this one more because I really connected to Holda as a character. I thought this book was really smart. It surprised me. So she is a detective inspector 
and she is basically being forced into early retirement. So I read this book back in 2021 and I talked about how one of the things that I feel like I related to on some levels, <laughs> though I'm not an inspector and I am not getting pushed out to retire, but I feel like as a woman and as someone who is aging in the workforce and how people look at you differently and how you're treated, I feel like I really connected with that part of the story. And then on top of that, this was just a fantastic mystery, detective, thrillery, not like fast paced thrillery, I guess like suspense. It's just all the hallmarks of Nordic Noir. Absolutely amazing. Great introduction to Ragnar Jonasson. He has a second series, which I started. Hold it please, because of course, of course there's a pile of books on the floor. <laughs> That's how I film my videos. So I also read Snowblind and I read this also last year. Yes, I had to double check. I'm still like mixed up on like when life is. So I read this at the end of 2022. This is the first in a six book series. I have the other five books in it, so I might read more from this series. We'll see. But this is set in a very small town. This is following a rookie policeman named Ari Thor. And he winds up going to like the sleepiest sleepy town ever and nobody locks their doors and everything's safe and everything's great and everyone's known each other forever. And of course, on the first page of the book, we have a body face down and bleeding in the snow. So things are not as perfect as they appear. So both great series, if you guys are interested in it. He also has a couple standalones if you were interested in just giving his books a try. But the darkness is really, this is the darkness, <laughs> my big recommendation for him since I've already read it. I haven't read his standalones yet, but I also have those too. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. A lot of these are series I find, but that's okay. So the next series, I've talked about this one before too. This is one I want to get into. So this is The Witch Hunter by Max Seek. And this is following an author and it says a best-selling author's wife has been found dead in a gorgeous black evening gown sitting at the head of an empty dining table, her most chilling feature, her face is frozen in a ghastly smile. And her murder scene is a reenactment of the gruesome murders from this author's Witch Hunt trilogy. So we meet investigator Jessica Niemi, and she soon realizes she's not looking for a single killer, but rather for dozens of believers in a sinister form of witchcraft who know her every move and are always one step ahead. So I have heard tremendous things about this series. The third book just came out this year. So book number two is The Ice Coven and book number three is The Last Grudge. So again, I have heard great things about this. He has won a bunch of awards, including the Finnish Whodunit Society Debut Thriller of the Year Award in 2016 and a best crime novel for The Witch Hunter, which is known internationally as The Faithful Reader. So giving it a go, I'm gonna give it a go. It is just, I don't know, books about writers, you guys know, is really my weak spot. So I've got this one, and then I have another one, which is a detective series, which also involves a writer, which happens to be on my 23 and 23, and this is The Tenant by Katrine Engberg. This is now a four book series. <laughs> You know, I can hear you guys screaming at me already. And I have talked about this one so many times before and I've just failed miserably at actually reading it. No excuses. And in this one, we have a young woman who was discovered brutally murdered in her own apartment with an intricate pattern of lines carved on her face. And we meet Copenhagen police detectives, Corner and Werner. They are assigned to the crime. So the writer bit comes in and that their landlady is a bit too fond of drink and is the host of raucous dinner parties with her artist friends. She's also a budding novelist. And when Julie, who is the tenant, turns up as a murder victim in the still unfinished mystery that our landlady is writing, the link between fiction and real life grows more urgent and more dangerous. So I have heard that this is one of those series that definitely continues to get better and better as you get into it. It's got this cool map. I'm all about this like hot green, neon green look and feel of it. And I've had you guys repeatedly ask me slash tell me to read this one. So the fact that it's a 23 and 23 and it's the first in a series and it's a translated book, I feel like it has a very good shot of being a bingo contender, but I make no promises because we all remember the cautionary tale of Audrey's Dark Academia TBR of 2022. I'm not doing that again. Okay, a couple more authors to recommend to you guys. So the first one I have is Camilla Greb. This is The Ice Beneath Her. I read this book last year, 
It's a good thing I put things in it. Yeah, beginning of 2022. So this is police investigation, multiple POVs, multiple timelines. This was a surprise to me in, I feel like the emotional weightiness on top of a very gruesome murder and a lot of heavy police investigation, which I love. And I really enjoyed this book. So I feel like similarly to The Darkness by Ragnar Jonasson, I was so impressed with stylistic choices and story choices that were made in these books and I really enjoyed them. So this one opens with another brutal crime. There's a lot of brutality in Nordic Noir and it says it's made all the more disturbing by its uncanny resemblance to an unsolved killing from 10 years earlier. So in this one we have an unidentified woman lying beheaded in a posh suburban home and the high profile business owner who owns the home who is a playboy has a reputation for financial misdeeds is missing so the police officers who are investing vet, police officers words who are investigating this case are also part of the unsolved case from 10 years ago they wind and bring wind up bringing oh words they wind up bringing in somebody else that they worked with a profiler on that case and we see both the past and present timelines of the cases. And I was super impressed with this. So this is the first of her books that I read. I wanna say this is the first in a series. This was her solo American debut, but I thought it was really, really great. So big fan of this one. I also feel like you can read this and feel complete. So it's not like a series that leaves you on a cliffhanger. I also think you might thoroughly enjoy her writing and wanna read more. So we've got that going. And then an author I haven't read yet, but I maybe have four or five of her books, is Ursa, I do it every single time, Sigurdar Daughter. So she lives in Reykjavik. This book, I Remember You, is a ghost story, it says. It's the winner of the Icelandic Crime Fiction Award. This is a standalone. She does have series as well. And in this one, it says, a terrifying tale where three friends set to work renovating a rundown house in a remote, totally isolated location. Things I love friend group, isolated location. But they soon realize they are not as alone as they thought. Something wants them to leave. And then we have a second storyline where in a nearby town, a young doctor is investigating the suicide of an elderly woman and discovers that she was obsessed with his vanished son. When the two stories collide, the shocking truth becomes horribly clear. So I've heard this is very creepy and I am down for very creepy a lot of the time. And I've also just heard tremendous things about her writing. So this feels like a great intro, again, a standalone novel. So I can rally around that one big time. And then I'm actually, as I sit here thinking, I haven't read this yet by Camilla Sten. This is her second book, The Resting Place. I read her first book, which is called The Lost Village. And I really enjoyed that one as well. I don't know why that Ursa book just reminded me of it, but in the Lost Village, there's a group of friends who are doing, it's like a small town that has been, like the entire town vanished years ago. Everybody in it, it's, there's just no explanation for it. One day there were people in the town, the next day there literally weren't. And one woman got out, so she knew of the town. So it is her granddaughter who has gathered together kind of a true crime documentary film crew, and they go to investigate. And it's all sorts of creepy and wonderful. So I have not read this one yet, but I'm interested. Not a series, so both standalone, so you can dive into these totally fine. So in this one, we have a case of face blindness, which was also a storyline in Alice Feeney's Rock, Paper, Scissors. So in this one, it says, when Eleanor walked in on the scene of her capriciously cruel grandmother Vivian's murder, she came face to face with the killer, a maddening expression that means nothing to someone like her. With each passing day, the anxiety of having come so close to a killer and not knowing if they'd be back overtakes both her dreams and waking moments, thwarting her perception of reality. So we have her grandmother has left her a estate in the Swedish woods, and there's going to be boyfriends, reckless aunts, house of secrets, looking for answers, and I'm very intrigued. So I really enjoyed her writing in the first book. I really enjoyed the story of it, and I love the sort of dancing the line that happens in some of these books with like an is it isn't it ghost story kind of a thing so see if I can get that back in without creating chaos and I'm excited for that and then as I turn around I realize I have another one so another translated book which I haven't read 
<laughs> That's why I love doing these videos, you guys. This is The Golden Cage by Camilla Lackberg. So this is another one I've heard great things about. This is also part of a series, and I would like to read it. <laughs> so how's that? Her books have been translated into 40 languages and sold in more than 60, 60 countries. That's crazy. That is goals. So in this one, we have a sexy, over-the-top psychological thriller that tells the story of the scorned wife of a billionaire and her delicious plot to get her revenge and bring him to his knees. I love a revenge story. Love it, love it, love it. So she wrote The Ice Princess, which I read last year? 2021 or 2022. I really enjoyed that book as well. That is also a standalone book. That is a girl comes home, sort of a reluctant return home. Her best friend has died. There is question whether it was a suicide or it was a murder. And we get the family, we get the small town, we get the investigation, we get some wonderful complicated secrets and lies and pasts. And I really enjoyed that book. So this one definitely sounds a little less detective-y and more <laughs> revenge. It's written right there in the blurb. So I'm excited for this one too. What a great excuse to read it. And then the last one I want to recommend for translated books, which is another one I haven't read yet, but I've talked about it to you guys before. This is The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatushi. I know I'm not... I'm not even going to pretend to speak Japanese. I totally did that wrong. This is a Japanese cult classic. This is inspired by Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. So in this one, it says the lonely rockbound island of Tsunojima is notorious as the site of a series of bloody unsolved murders. Some even say it's haunted. I hope it is. One thing's for sure. It's the perfect destination for the K University Mystery Club's trip. But when the first club member turns up dead, the remaining amateur sleuths realize they will need all their murder mystery expertise to get off the island alive. As the party are picked off one by one, the survivors grow desperate and paranoid, turning on each other. Will anyone be able to untangle the murderer's fiendish plan before it's too late? I love it, then there were none. I have heard great things about this book, and I am just overdue on reading it. I... I have no excuses, you guys. I really have no excuses, you guys. I'm like low-key embarrassed with some of this stuff too. So this was originally published in 1987 and then the English translation was done in 2015. So I am really late to the party on this one. I picked it up a couple of years ago and then I actually also got the arc of Yukito's newest novel and I'm interested in that one too. But I wanna read this one because I love And Then There Were None. I love an isolated thriller. And I just, I'm so intrigued. And I want to say it was at the book two besties retreat that somebody was talking about this as well as a recommend, uh, a recommended, as a recommended book. <laughs> I'm really struggling with words today. So that is my final book for this video. Now everybody's going to stop watching. Okay, so that's going to do it for recommended books, books I've read, books I want to read. I know that I have more. And again, I know a lot of these were series books, but I do think you can start a series and be fine and not going on because sometimes it's just sort of like obviously if you're following detectives they have more cases and things change but I would like to think and again with the ones I haven't read I'd like to think that they're wrapped up in the first book I'm really just kind of talking here right now but anyway I think there's great options great choices standalones all the things but let me know what your recommendations are for translated books this is definitely one of those prompts that people are always looking for inspiration on and I feel like there's probably just endless books that I haven't talked about. I don't feel like it. I know it. So at this stage of the game, I hope you guys are having a great time with Bingo. If you are playing along, thank you so much for joining in and being super supportive of it. And if you haven't already started, it's never too late. This was 101 days in its totality. So you guys have plenty of time to hop on in and hopefully have some fun along the way. But I will be back with some more recommendation videos, some more just regular Audrey videos. And until then, take care, everybody, and I will see you in those videos. Bye, guys.